Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Man Up with DeBell Industries. And my name is Randy DeBell. Thank you so much for being here today. And today I want to talk just a little bit about hope. Hope. Think about it. It's a word we hear a lot. It's a word we use a lot. Hope. Do you have any? Do you have any hope? Do you have any hope to give, to share, to give away? Man, hope. Let's look at our anchor today. Proverbs 13, 12 says this, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope is so important. You've got to have hope to get out of bed in the morning, to pursue dreams. You've got to have hope in your life. And Jesus Christ is the only true hope giver that we'll ever run into. People will let us down. People will mess with us. No matter how much you love them or they love you, they are not perfect. Jesus Christ and his hope is perfect. I looked up another definition of the word hope. And this definition said a feeling of trust. That's what Jesus Christ gives us in our life. It's a feeling of trust. I can trust him. I can lean on him. He has my back. He has my future. He has my present. He has everything in his hands. And when I surrender and give it to him, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. He gives me hope in today, tomorrow, and our future. I have a hope because of Jesus Christ. You know, on uh, Netflix, I've watched it at least twice now, and it's a documentary, documentary about Ted Williams, one of the greatest baseball players that ever played the game. I'm not a big baseball fan, not a big baseball nut. Uh, I love to watch it when my sons played it, but if they're not playing it, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I don't really care. But I've watched this documentary, oh man, at least twice, I think three times now total. And it's been so interesting, the life and story of Ted Williams. This guy, his whole point of living, his desire, his what he wanted, his hope was this, that when people looked at him, thought about him, recognized him, whatever, saw him walking down the street, that they had one thing to say, that they would say this, there goes, there goes the greatest hitter in the history of baseball. The greatest hitter of all time. Ted Williams, right there. He's the guy. That fueled him. That fueled him in baseball and what he did in baseball, the records he broke and, and just the averages and everything that he had. It was just incredible. But he had, a, had a, just a crazy life of fame, fortune. He was a Marine fighter pilot in World War II and in the Korean War. They called him out of baseball, re reactivated him, and for a year he was in the Korean War flying a Marine fighter jets. He even crashed one. He comes back, picks up a baseball bat, and doesn't miss, miss a beat. The greatest hitter that ever picked up a bat. The quick wrist, the form, the speed, the stance, everything. Uh, he wrote a book about it, and people still use his book from the 50s and 60s to talk, teach about hitting. And people watch videos of his swing, his stance, his form, everything. That fueled this man. But it was just an incredible life that he lived. His mother was involved in the Salvation Army, and she would go across the border into Mexico for weeks at a time and minister to people and families in Mexico. So she was just kind of MIA. And Dad, he was a drunk. And so Ted Williams and his brother basically raised themselves, and they didn't know how to treat women, a girlfriend, a wife, uh, each other, but he was just a very hard, rough character at times, and, and just an incredible life, but yet at other times, he was very tender 
and caring towards people he didn't even know. And he'd help them out. But his own family, his own daughter, and just talked about how what kind of a guy he was. We had to be so careful around him because just anything would upset him. And he'd explode and it would just F-bombs all over the place. And, and just don't upset dad. He was married multiple times and just, you know, he, he liked women. He liked multiple women. And he didn't know how to treat a wife. And... What was so incredible with his life, it's just as he aged and, and you know, he had a couple of strokes, his body became diseased, he eventually, he died. And, but before he died, his family talked him into, have you ever heard about this, cryogenics? It's where they take you and freeze you. And the plan is that someday when they find a cure for the disease you died of, they'll thaw you out, cure that disease, and bring you back to life. Well, I hate to pop anybody's bubble or balloon here, but that's not going to happen because the spirit has left that body. That spirit is now in eternity, either in heaven or in hell. You're not going to bring that stiff, cold, dormant body back to life. And so his children kind of talked him into this, and, and it just kind of blew me away. It amazed me, just freeze his body? Right now, in 2019, his body is somewhere frozen, waiting to someday be unfrozen with all the cures for everything that he had wrong with him. And his daughter, with big tears in her eyes, talked about it. And here's what she said. She said, Without the comfort of a religion. That's how they saw it was a religion. It wasn't a relationship. But she said, without the comfort of a religion, cryogenics gives us a slim, small hope of seeing my dad again. Man. When I heard that, it just it broke my heart because I thought, here's this family, here's this daughter, loved her dad, admired her dad. All his faults, failures, it didn't matter. She loved him. It was dad. But her only hope of ever seeing him again, strong, healthy, and whole, is in cryogenics. It's not in God. It's not in a relationship with Jesus Christ and God the Father. And it just blew me away. This, it made me think about this morning. Before I got out of bed, I was laying there and I was thinking about my day, planning the day, this, 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 and that, and, and next week and the next month, and just trying to figure so many different things out. And before I even got out of bed, I was almost, almost frustrated. And the Lord just reminded me very simply, here's his Holy Spirit. This is what his Holy Spirit told me. It was, <laughs> it was so good. It was just this, Randy, one day at a time. Today, I know what my assignment was. I knew the things that I had to do today. One day at a time, son. One day at a time. And then he also reminded me of this, give hope today. Give hope today. Be someone's hope today. That no matter where I go or what I do, who I work with, what store I go in, what company I interact with, it doesn't matter. I get to be their hope today because I'm full of Jesus Christ. I know where I'm headed. I know where I'm going. I know that if I would drop over dead right now, making this video, don't cry, don't weep, don't mourn. <laughs> Be happy because I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. And, and as Billy Graham said, more alive than he'll, he'll, he ever was. Man, give hope. Give hope. Our life can give hope to the hopeless, people that are broken, they're busted, they just got nothing left. Our life can bring hope if we live it to the full. 
live it with Jesus pouring out of us, pouring out of us, no matter where we go, who we talk with, or what we do. So man, I just so encourage you, just man up. Give hope today. Give hope today to your family, to your wife, to your kids, to your co-workers, that your life becomes an invitation to Jesus Christ, that people don't hate church and hate God because of you, but they're interested and they want to love God and love church because of you. It's possible. The world is a hungry, hungry place for Jesus Christ and God the Father. So once again, men, I respectfully ask you, drive like a man. Drive undistracted. These past few weeks, it's just been in just terrible, the amount of first responders that are getting killed alongside our highways. States all across our nation, first responders are being killed as they're there serving us on the shoulder of a highway. Don't drive distracted. It's a killer. So men, please, please, please put that phone down. Guys, contact me. If you need somebody to talk to, if you need somebody just to blah, let it all out, you can trust me. You can trust me. It will go no further. If you'd like to just sit down and talk, sit down, have a sweet tea, sit down, have breakfast, whatever it is, man, contact me at dbellindustries at gmail.com. Guys, always, always remember, God loves you. God loves you, and so do I. Go out and make it a great one.